Hello, how you doing? It's Phil Thatch, and I like inexpensive super telephoto lenses. I obviously have a problem. If you look in front of me here on the table, you'll see lots of inexpensive telephoto lenses. And it's because that's what I like to shoot with. I have had a really expensive super telephoto lens in the past. I had a Nikkor 500 millimeter F4, which that's a super exotic. I think I paid $8,000 for it and I bought mine on the gray market. Uh, because I'm cheap. But uh, anyway, and I ended up selling that lens later, but I, I love that lens and I used it for a long time. But the kind of lenses that I really like to use is the same kind of lens I would imagine most of you folks like to use. And that is super telephoto lenses that don't cost as much as a small used car. And so let's see, here's the first one that I had that was of that variety. Actually, I had a Sigma 150 to 500 and then there was no 200 to 500 Nikon lens, and I ended up buying uh, that 500 f4 because there just wasn't something like this. And then finally, Nikon introduced this lens as a 200 to 500 zoom lens, f5.6 continuous, reasonably priced, nice and sharp. So I bought that, and I ended up selling the 500 f4 and still have this. And so then I started experimenting with Canon. And Canon doesn't really have anything like that. So I ended up buying this lens. This, I, I love this lens. This is the 100 to 500 at 4.5 to 7.1. The trouble with this lens is it's kind of expensive. It's uh, nearly $3,000 where the rest of these are under $2,000. But what this lens has going for it is it's super tiny. I've got a smaller than stock lens hood on it. And when Heather and I go to Canada for our honeymoon, I'm not taking any of these bigger lenses. I'm taking this. So this lens will always have a place. But Sony was the first first party manufacturer to make a 600 millimeter inexpensive lens. I think you could get 600 millimeter inexpensive lenses from Tamron and Sigma, but Sony kind of pushed the bar when they released this lens. This is their 200 to 600 lens and it's an internal zoom. It's, it's really, really something and it's a little under $2,000, so it's perfect for what I'm looking for. But at the time that Sony had this out, there was really nothing like that from Nikon and Canon. And Canon uh, released this, this is an 800 millimeter lens, it's a prime lens, with this extended thing that you lock and now you can shoot with it. It's an 800 millimeter F11, so that's really cool. And this is under $1,000. And they have a 600 millimeter version of this as well, but I like the, the freedom of a zoom or it just, it allows me to not always be, you know, I, I, there's a lot of times when 800 millimeters is nice or 600 or 500, but I don't always need it. You know, I don't want to be stuck there. Uh, the flexibility of a zoom is really, really nice. So that kind of limits this lens's usefulness. Well, Nikon came to the party finally and released a 180 to 600 just very recently. I haven't had this lens long. And now if you're a Nikon shooter, you've got a great, really inexpensive lens. This thing's well under $2,000 and it's dynamite. But Canon doesn't have anything really to compete with that other than this expensive lens that only goes to 500 millimeters and this 800 millimeter lens that doesn't zoom and it's F11. Canon did come out with something that's really great for people on a super budget. This lens is like $649. This is a 100 to 400. And if you're using an APS-C camera like the Canon R7, you can get a lot done with this little lens. This thing's dynamite. But they didn't have anything really to compete with this 200 to 600 from Sony and this 180 to 600 from Nikon. Well, a couple of months ago, sometime around September, I'm recording this video on October 29th, but sometime around September, there were rumors circulating around about a patent being filed from Canon for a 200 to 800 that would be, I think a 6.3 to F9. And you know, companies experiment all the time and patent things all the time, but that doesn't mean they're gonna release it. So I didn't really even hardly bat an eye when I saw that patent in the news about that patent being uh, filed. Well, fast forward nearly two months later 
and it looks like they're actually going to release that. The rumor is that Canon are going to announce the 200 to 800, the RF 200 to 800, F6, I, think, I don't know if it's F6 or F6.3, I think it's 6.3 to F9, but they're going to announce that on November the 2nd. And my function of this channel, my main thing that I like to cover, I like to just do photography, but I also like to cover photography gear. And my main thing that I like to cover is inexpensive every man's bird lenses. You know, all of these lenses, well, with the exception of this one, are so reasonably priced that people who are just hobbyist bird photographers can afford to go buy maybe an APS-C body because they're a little cheaper and have a little more reach and one of these lenses and go out and make some fantastic bird photos without breaking the bank. And my idea is to cover that from all three brands, all three major brands, Nikon, Canon, and Sony, and so if they do release that lens on November the 2nd and it is priced like the rumors say it's going to be priced, they're saying it's going to be right around $2,000, I'm getting it. It's a no-brainer. Now there's all sorts of stuff. Is it going to be an L lens? Well, it's not going to be an L lens if it's going to be that price because the 100 to 500 L lens is nearly $3,000. So I'm thinking it's not going to be an L lens, which is fine. I bought this. It's not an L lens. I bought this. It's not an L lens. The next thing that people are, are discussing is, is it going to be a big white, which doesn't have to be big to be white. This is little and it's white, but is it, is the paint color on the lens going to be white or is it going to be black? I don't care. I mean, honestly, I'd probably prefer that it be white, but if it turns out that it's black, fine, no problem. I'm still getting it as long as it's optically good and I'm sure it'll be fine. Canon's not going to release a lens like this lens right here, the $649 lens, optically it's dynamite. So I don't think Canon's going to release that 200 to 800 lens, which is going to sell like crazy and put bad optics in it. The next question is, is it going to be a USM motor or is it going to be STM? And people are saying, oh, if it's STM, it'll focus too slow. Well, this thing's STM and I've heard people say it focuses slow. I think it focuses fine. I've never had any problem with autofocus speed from this 800 F11 STM motor. So USM, STM, either one, doesn't matter. I'm getting it. And so will probably a lot of you guys. The next thing that people are concerned about is what's the level of weather sailing going to be? Well, you know what? I bet most of you guys, if it starts pouring down rain, you call it quits on your photo shoot. I mean, I might continue to make photos if it's sprinkling, but if it comes a downpour, I'm quitting. I'm going back to the car. I'm going home. And so with that in mind, it doesn't matter if it's majorly weather sealed. You know, even this lens, this super budget lens has enough weather sealing to operate in a light sprinkle for a little while. I would probably want to wipe off the barrel before I zoom it back in. But the amount of weather sealing doesn't matter to me. What matters to me is, is it optically good, which I bet it will be, or they wouldn't write Canon on it. And is it inexpensive, which if it's priced, like they say, it's going to be priced $2,000. You better get your name on the waiting list because these things are going to sell like crazy. As a matter of fact, even though it's not been announced yet, I've already contacted my salesperson at the camera store where I like to do business and said, Hey, put me on the list for the Canon RF 200 to 800. Got to get one. I can't believe they're making this, but I think they really are going to. I was not falling for it for about two months, but news has been stirring in the last week or so, and it looks like they're really going to do it. So let's get one. And then I'll be able to compare it to all these others, the old school Nikon 200 to 500, Sony's current 200 to 600, which I bet, seeing as how this one's been around a while, I bet they'll make a replacement for this in the next two or three years. Nikon's brand new and absolutely fabulous 180 to 600. And I'd say if they, if that lens comes out, the 200 to 800, and it's really good, I will probably go ahead and sell this 800 F11. I mean, I, I love this lens. I used it exclusively for quite some time for bird photography, even though I already had the 100 to 500 because I was shooting with the Canon R6, which is low resolution full frame. And the 100 to 500 just wasn't enough uh, power, not enough focal length for that low resolution full frame camera. But now 
I don't use this that much because I've got the R7 and the 100 to 500 does well on it, but occasionally I need that extra reach. And then wouldn't it be nice to have it all in one lens? Could you shoot it 200, 300, 400, 500, 600, seven and 800 all in one lens? That'll be awesome. So definitely want to get one. This will probably be for sale at Robert's camera. That's where I usually sell my lenses to. And uh, thanks for watching. What an exciting time to be a bird photographer on a budget. Bye-bye.